This segment is brought to you by none other than Travis Anonymous commercial you just seen. Listen, man, breaking down a brick is an amazing segment that we use to show you a company. Sometimes you may know the company, sometimes you may not know the company. The golden objective is to show you different companies that you can see, use, and understand. This week's breaking down a brick is none other than, drum roll please, Kimberly and Clark, man, this is a great company, right? It's a long company that's been out for a while. Scotch tissue paper, cotton all, huggies, uh, baby huggies. Uh, we got the pull-ups, we got the cleaners, we got the Kleenex, we got the, whoa, there's man diapers? I didn't know they had men diapers, though. Sometimes it's good to just be quiet for a second. You never know nobody's situation, man. All right, so let's go a little further, man. So, listen, when we look at Kimberly Clark, uh, the industry average, we're talking about P.E. ratio, is 32.8. Uh, we can see right now that Kimberly and Clark is probably at around 26.2, which means it's actually cheaper than the industry average. But it is still expensive compared to the S&P 500. Let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. Um, here's the financial health of the company. The current P.E. rate. Current ratio is 0 0.78. That means we don't like the financial stability. Debt to equity ratio is 2.68, meaning they have more equity compared to debt, debt to EBITDA. Interest coverage ratio is 9.2, which means that the company can do what? The company can pay off its debt. Debt servicing ratio means the company can service its debt at 15.4. We like those things. Here's the company total equity. Here's the company total debt. We not mad at that at all. Short cash flow, we see that right here. We're not mad at Kimberly and Clark. Let's move a little further. So let's just break some things down. Return on it. Return on equity is consistently at 12 to 15 percent year over year for the last five years. No, that's an issue for us to look at. Return on invested capital consistently at 12 percent to 15 percent over year over year for the last five years. Inconsistent. So that means the return on equity and the return on invested capital is inconsistent. Return on invested capital is usually around 14.78 percent. The whack. If you're a trap master, you know what this means. Uh, it's 4.37%. That's how we looked at the effectiveness of Kimberly and Clark. Let's go a little further, man. Let's look at it, man. Revenue growth year over year, five years consistently, yes. Net revenue, net income growing year over year for the past five years, inconsistent. Cash flow from operating activities growing year over year, inconsistent. Free cash flow positive for the past five years, Yes, gross margin percent is consistent, growing for the last five years, inconsistent. EPS growing for the past five years, inconsistent. Performance, revenue growing for the last five years, yes. Net income, inconsistent. Cash flow, inconsistent. We see it. free cash flow is important for us, man. Uh, gross margin is consistent, growing for the last five years, inconsistent. Growing EPS for the past five years is inconsistent. This gives us a quick look at a company that we can look at. What's good, Trappers, man? It's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. Right now, I want to invite you to an amazing experience full of value. That is my community, Trappers Anonymous. It's 100% the greatest fundamental investing community on the market. Listen. Your portfolio should be a masterpiece. And the only way we get you there is if we help you to learn how to invest with confidence. Now listen, I get it. Like you don't know a lot about stocks or maybe you've heard people say how much money they lost in stocks, but I can guarantee you one, because they weren't in the community and two, they lacked the information. Our goal in Travels Anonymous is to help you, really to hold your hand on the journey to becoming a confident, 
investor, learning how to navigate through the different events that the stock market goes through to bring your temperament down, to take you from panic to encouragement. So listen, man, come join us in Trappers Anonymous. The link is below. Listen, if you want to be helped, if you want to truly make money in the stock market, if you truly want to let your money work harder for you than you've worked for it, there's no better time than now. This is an opportunity only for those who are willing to be on the journey. So listen, man, click the link below. Come join me in Travis Anonymous, man. I will see you in one of our mini classes, whether it's Moat Monday, whether it's the two-hour class we do on Sunday, or whether it's just a book club. Everything is geared toward making you a better investor so you can triple your network and turn your last name to an asset. It's your boy, Wall Street Traveler. See you in the trap. Here we go, man. I believe that we all should own defense as well. I think you should own at least one stock in the defensive sector. Why? Because no matter who's in office, no matter who's in office, America will spend money on defense. Lockheed Martin CEO came out today and said they do expect slow growth for 2023, but more explosive growth for 2024 and 2025. They have a back order for over $150 billion in aircrafts. They also are developing ballistic missiles. That's right, that's the missile somebody shoot in the air, they can catch the missiles. They have 147 to 155 aircraft in the making for next year and for 2025. I personally believe in the defensive sector. I believe defense and I believe healthcare is something that everybody should own. Let's go a little further, man. Raytheon uh, is another defensive stock. The stock has a $16 billion buyback that reported today. The company actually has big dividends, and Boeing is up 10% just in 2023 alone. If you want access to any of these or all of these together, you can buy the ETF ITA. It's an iShares ETF. It'll give you access to Raytheon. It'll give you access to Boeing, and it'll give you access to Lockheed Martin. It also has Northern Grumman in it. Let's go, man. I like to call this needle money. <laughs> we like to call this legal money, needle money. Shout out to my guy, Steve, man. The reason why we call this needle money is because, man, Moderna has an RSV vaccine, and it is good for adults above 60. It is 84% effective and it is in phase three is well tolerated no safety concerns have been identified plans to submit it for regulatory approval in the first half of the year why do i call this needle money well because i personally believe that needle vaccines will now be the way that a lot of new healthcare companies will make money i'm gonna just tell you be mindful of taking those vaccines because once it go in you, it's hard to get it out you. Take that how you want it. <laughs> Let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. Watch this, though. Pfizer, and this is why I call the needle money. The RSV vaccine market for adults is from a $7 billion to a $10 billion industry between now and 2030. Needle money. Pfizer, GSK, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, and Norvac have all put in to have these forms of vaccines in place. Pfizer can launch one late this year. GSK can launch one late this year. Moderna is launching another one in 2024. Johnson & Johnson has one in phase three, and Nordic has one in phase three as well. I'm just saying... I just pay attention to where they're putting the money at. And I'm not saying I'm going to invest in any of these. What I am saying is always pay attention to what's going on and what navigate. I will say this. As an investor, only invest in things that morally fit you. There isn't such thing as moral investing. I would never invest in a prison because I don't believe in prison stock. Some people would never invest. I would never invest in Johnson & Johnson because I know for a fact they got people with cancer and they did that purposely. I would never invest in uh, the company that we cut. <laughs> Forgot the name of the company. Monsanto. 
We'll never invest in that company. We'll never invest in that company. That's right, Z. Eat right, exercise right, go on and take care of yourself. Shout out to my girl, Ashana, man. She is on her fitness journey, and she will pay me $15 every time she does not go to the gym. Let's go. Moving on. Let's go, man. How y'all enjoy y'all show tonight, man? It's been a good night, man. Fintech, 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 fintech. I love fintech. Big banks now have entered the fintech space. Wells Fargo, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, and four other banks have come up with plans to put out a digital wallet. The digital wallet will take on people like Apple. It will take on people like PayPal. And it will take on all other fintech companies. Well, Mr. Trapper, Wall Street Trapper, you said last year that you love fintech. And Mr. Trapper, the fintech industry has been getting its butt whipped. Yes, I do know, but I am bold enough to bet on the future. I told everyone that that has to be a four- to five-year play because the way we use money will change. The way we use money is changing. The issue behind this is, can the banks put the right technology in place right now? We've already seen companies like Wells Fargo and Bank of America struggle with technology. Let's go a little further. Here's the crazy part, though, y'all. When we think about the other four banks that's owning this, that's part of this, right? The company that will be housing the digital wallet is the same company that is called Early Warning System, EWS. This is the same company that operates all transfers for Zelle. That's right. When you Zelle somebody some money, when you Zelle somebody some money, there's a company that actually is responsible for those things. Watch this. Let's go a little further, y'all. Show you how deep this is. So they said there's four other banks that have part of this, right? Capital One, Truist. U.S. Bank Corp. and PNC Bank, these are the four banks that own EWS. Here's what I want to understand. If fintech, if fintech wasn't a threat, why would all the big banks come together and say, yo, we have to create our own digital wallet? That way when customers and our customers go to the shopping center, when they go to the movie, they can simply say, hey, I'm with Wells Fargo, I'm with Bank of America, I'm with PNC, I'm with Trust, I'm with J.P. Morgan Chase. Why is this possible? Why is this happening? You only come up with a product when you feel like what you have and what you're doing is being threatened. Technology and new technology threatens every industry in the world. No one is exempt. No one is exempt. I will stand on it firmly. I will buy me some more PayPal I will buy me some more of these digital fintech companies because fintech will definitely change the game. I'm not telling you to do it, but I personally will buy it. Let's go. <laughs> Luxury goods are making a comeback, man. Listen, LVMH is up 18% year to date. We also got companies like Burberry, Tapestry, Hermes, and Karen Group. All of these are foreign um, stocks on a foreign, not on a foreign, on a European market. They are all up 13% year to date. Luxury goods is making a comeback. So my question is, is the consumer back in a good state? I don't know. All right, let's go a little further, man. All right, man, so y'all know that this part is called learning the lingo. This part of the show is always dedicated to teaching trappers how to invest by learning the lingo. The reason why most people don't invest, the reason why people, a lot of people stop investing is because they don't understand what they're investing in. Learning the lingo is dedicated to helping you understand exactly what it is that's going on. This week's learning the lingo is market cap. The total value of a publicly traded company of outstanding common shares owned by stockholders. Market capitalization is equal to the market price per common share multiplied by the number of common shares outstanding. Let me just make it simple for you. It's definitions like that why you personally don't understand what market cap is. Market cap is simple. Outstanding shares mean the number of shares that a company has times the stock price give you the market cap. I'll give you an example. I'll even make it simple for you. If I had 10 shares and each one of my shares were worth $100, then my market cap is how much? Let me see it in the chat. If my company had 10 shares, and that's it, and each share was worth $100 a piece, how much would my market cap be? If you said $1,000, you got it right. But watch this. A company's market cap can increase and decrease. Watch this. 
if I had 10 shares still and then my market cap went up to $200, what would my market cap be then? $2,000. Market cap goes up and goes down based on the stock price. Stock price time outstanding shares gives you a company's market cap. So when you hear what a company's market cap, understand that it is simply one thing. Stock price times outstanding shares give you the market cap. This definition that they give you, the total value of a publicly traded company's outstanding shares owned by stockholders, market capitalization is equal to the market cap price per common share multiplied by the number of common shares outstanding. I can promise you most people read that and say, man, I'm not even doing that shit. But as a trapper, we just simplified it. And that is the importance of trapping tools. Let's go, y'all.